Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got 10 equipment-free exercises that you can perform at home to get those quarantine gains going. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos on resolving aches and pains, preventing injuries, and overall optimizing your performance. And it doesn't get much cooler than that. So click that button. Ready? Let's go ahead and get into this one. All right, guys, the topic of the day, 10 equipment-free exercises that you could be performing from home to get those quarantine gains going. And all you're gonna need for today's exercises are a single bed sheet. You know, the one that gets curled up and rolled to the bottom of the bed every morning that really is just more annoying than anything else. Yeah, we're gonna put that to good use. And the basis of all the exercises today are isometrics. We're really gonna be focusing on the power of isometrics. And just to give you a nice little head story on this one so that you really truly can look into it a little bit more, there was a guy in World War I named Alexander Zoss. And the guy really just liked being strong. They called him the Amazing Samson. And just to give you a quick overview of the story, the guy gets captured in World War I multiple times and used the power of isometrics to actually begin to bend the bars and the shackles that he was chained in and eventually use that to break free multiple times as I said. So if you think you don't have enough equipment at home to make gains, you just got the wrong idea. It's all about tension here and we're going to be teaching that through these exercises. So without further ado, let's get into it. Exercise number one, the isometric leg press. So what we're going to be doing here is lying on our back and placing the sheet so our feet are about hips distance apart, parallel to one another there. Now I want to grab that sheet so that my knees are bent almost as if I were about mid-range on the actual leg press machine. So I have not full extension to the leg, but also my knees aren't getting pulled complete, completely to my chest here. I want to make sure my shoulders are rolled down and back and I've choked up enough that my arms are pretty much fully extended. I don't want to be wasting too much energy on focusing on a bicep curl in this position. And I really want to be able to hone in on the legs here. So my arms are pretty much dead weight, with the shoulder blades pulled down and back to the floor. My abdomen engaging so that I'm actually pulling my lumbar spine to the floor as well. And then once I have that, I'm going to be driving and putting tension into the sheet here so that I'm overall trying to push out just like a leg press on it. Of course, my arms are not gonna allow for this and I'm just gonna be doing the isometric hold portion of it. Now, I won't get into the specifics of how long to hold, how long to rest just yet. I'm gonna save that for the very end because these are all isometric based and you can just use about the same formula for each of them when you're doing it. But we're driving out, pushing out with the knees driving wide just as if you were standing up from a squat on this one and we should get some pretty good activation of the glutes and the quadriceps as you are pushing out through that blanket, through that sheet at this point. Exercise number two, the isometric bent row. So on this one, I'm gonna be placing my feet on the actual uh, blanket here on the sheet, and I'm making sure that I, my stance is pretty much set up as if I were doing a real bent row. So I want to make sure that my hips are back, my knees are slightly bent, so I'm loading my posterior chain, my abdomen are engaged so I'm not arching my lumbar spine, and I'm rolling those shoulder blades down and back so that my upper back musculature is engaged. Now I want to be holding that blanket, that towel, that the uh, sheet, whatever you're using for this, that I want to be holding it at a point where my elbows can actually reach about to the point where they're at my rib cage because I'm focusing mainly on getting the musculature of the upper back and scapula to contract here. So pulling from that 90 degree position and contracting upper back musculature, holding good posture of the core in this position, even feeling the glutes engaging as I'm holding that. So once again, pretty much full body tension in that isometric position and focusing on the pull from the upper back. You might get the uh, biceps getting a little bit as well here as you pull in that isometric position. Exercise number three, 
the isometric push-up. For this one, we're going to be placing the middle of the towel, the uh, blanket, the sheet <laughs> over my mid-back, just below my shoulders. So I want the, the towel, the sheet to go under my armpits and over my thoracic spine here. What I'm doing is placing my hands on the end of the actual sheet here so that I'm blocking the range of motion that I'm able to get. So I shouldn't be able to reach my maximum height of my push-up or think of like a tall plank position. I don't want to get that tall. I want to actually block myself before I finish that height. It might be about 90 degrees. If I'm really tight on the sheet, I can go even further up and get closer to that lockout position. You can play with the actual height that you're working at on the isometric and that's going to change the dynamic of the workout a little bit for you. But Overall, focusing on keeping the actual armpits kind of hugging that sheet so the elbows are down and in, my butt's tight, my stomach's tight, I have a nice solid plank, I'm not arching at all through the spinal column as I press here, and I'm pushing into the tension and blocking myself getting, get from getting up to that full push-up height. Exercise number four, the ISO reverse fly. So on this one, Pretty simple design. I'm just gonna be standing and holding that towel, that sheet in front of me at about a shoulder or slightly wider than shoulder apart grip here. And engaging the floor first of all with my feet, making sure I have three points of contact from the feet, first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal heel, engaging the quads, engaging the glutes. So I have tension built up from the floor, abs engaged. And then from there, once I have that ready and set, I'm actually gonna be pulling apart, trying to initiate the pull from the scapula, keeping my shoulder blades down and back, making sure they don't elevate and creep up into my ears as I'm pulling apart, trying to rip that sheet in half. Think of it that way. And if you can complete that, I would call you on Alexander Zoss level at that point. Exercise number five the isometric tricep extension. So on this one, imagine you got your towel wrapped around your neck, the sheet wrapped around your neck. Once again, building up from the base, so we have those three points of contact at the floor, quads engaged, glutes engaged, abs engaged, musculature of the upper back engaged, shoulders are down and back. Here we want the elbows at 90 degrees as if I were sitting in an armchair. Once I have that position set, the actual towel over the shoulders there, over the traps, I'm gonna be pulling straight down trying to engage those triceps. Now I wanna make sure that I'm not pulling my head or neck forward with this. I should have enough of a position over the traps that it actually pulls down into the traps. It might feel good on your upper traps if you hold a lot of tension there, but we're gonna be pulling down and over, engaging those triceps, trying to actually pull the sheet to the floor and holding it there in that position. Exercise number six, the isometric bicep curl. So on this one, we're gonna be standing on the sheet again here, and the width of my stance can be about hips distance apart. I wanna make sure that I'm able to get into a hammer curl position, so that's gonna be my grip on the sheet on this one, so that my thumbs point up toward the ceiling as if I were holding a hammer, hence the hammer curl name. I want to build it from the floor once again. You'll hear that repeatedly when we're in standing positions. So three points of contact from the feet, tight butt, tight stomach, tight quads, shoulder blades on the upper back. From there, pulling those thumbs toward the shoulders without letting the elbow creep forward. I want to keep the elbows pinned to the rib cage, keeping the shoulders in line, making sure I don't end up protracting or rounding forward and letting the chest cave. Exercise number seven, the isometric glute bridge. So on this one, I'm going to be draping the sheet. So it, the middle of the sheet is pretty much over my hip crease here. And then I'm going to be placing the ends of the sheet underneath my feet so that that locks it in. I want to make sure that I have enough sheet underneath my feet that I'm able to get to about my map, maximal hip extension and feel the tension from the sheet at that point. So I don't want to leave myself short on this one. I want to make sure I can get to that maximal extension because we really want to focus on those glutes engaging and feeling that little bit of extra tension from the sheet itself. So you can add that based on shortening the sheet underneath the feet in that position. So I want three points of contact from the feet still, even though they are blocking the sheets and the ends of the sheet and locking that in and pulling those heels close to the butt to begin with, lumbar spine engaging the floor so that I'm feeling my abdomen actually engaged and I put my pelvis in a little bit of posterior pelvic tilt. 
Then from there, driving up into that band, that uh, sheet, getting the tension and feeling overall that maximal hold in the glutes with the hips driving up and the knees driving wide. We should feel our glutes on this one. It should not be quads or hamstrings. If it is, we might need to talk. Exercise number eight, the prone pull up. So on this one, I'm gonna be lying belly down with the sheet about at chest height here to begin with. Think of uh, the sheet lying right across the line of the nipple underneath you to begin there. What I wanna do is actually grab that sheet so that my palms are facing the floor and I'm gonna get it to a point where I can actually pull it and have the wrist slightly outside of the elbow. So I'm pulling the sheet in tension while it's at my chest height, actually keeping the glutes engaging so that my pelvis is pinned to the floor, my feet are still engaging the floor. I'm not doing a Superman here. I don't want an arch at the uh, lumbar spine necessarily. I want to actually maintain most of my arch coming from the upper back and thoracic spine. So my abs are engaged, my glutes are engaged, I have the shoulder blades down and back and this actually picks the chest up off the floor. With that tension being held, this is a little bit, the isometric is from the pull itself here, but we're actually going to perform as if we were doing a pull up. So I'm going to reach my arms out while keeping that uh, sheet in tension pulling it apart as if I wanted to rip it, and then pull it back into my chest each time. So reaching out, trying to get the arms to full extension, pulling back to the chest, keeping the upper back engaged, keeping a new, neutral neck in this position as well, making sure that I'm not arching back my head or anything, keeping the chin tucked to the neck. Exercise number nine, the isometric pal-off rotation. I'm pretty proud of this one, guys. So we're gonna take a half kneeling position here, and I'm gonna place the sheet, one end of it, underneath the front foot. So I wanna be locking that down. I wanna take the sheet around the outside of the knee, so I'm actually gonna get some help here in glute engagement, and then I'm gonna wrap the sheet around my back so that it's coming around my back, and I'm holding the other end of the sheet with both hands. What I wanna do is have enough tension in that sheet that as I rotate toward that front leg, as I get to about the neutral position, I should be able to feel my obliques and my abdomen engaging quite a bit as well as the glutes on that front leg to actually help uh, press that, that sheet out wide and overall with the positioning. So we're using the wrapped uh, sheet to create the tension for the core work here overall. Enjoy this one guys, because I, I really do. And last but not least, the ISO deadlift. So, as you can imagine, we're standing on the sheet in this one. I want my feet about hips distance apart, parallel to one another, three points of contact, first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal, heel. What I want to do is actually start standing and work my way down to the sheet so that I have good form here. I'm making sure that I'm coming down with neutral spine to begin with. And I wanna be reaching the sheet in tension at about knee height so that when I'm pulling, I start to initiate the max tension just above knee height here. With that neutral spine, chin tucked to the, chet, to the uh, Adam's apple there, shoulder blades on the upper back, and my arms fully extended. I'm trying to stand up from this position when I engage the sheet. I want to see if I can draw my hips back underneath me and that's what I'm imagining, that tension right there. So I should feel my hamstrings loaded, my glutes loaded. I'm not feeling anything along the lumbar spine pulling. I'm not feeling my quadriceps, okay? I feel my hamstrings and my glutes as I pull and initiate that lift. And there you guys have it. 10 equipment-free exercises that you could be performing from your own home right now to get those quarantine gains going. So what I recommend for the actual isometric uh, rep scheme to begin with here is that you do a 10 second maximal contraction of the musculature in that isometric position, rest five seconds, and then complete reps. So about eight reps would take you about two minutes, and you should be pretty fatigued after doing eight reps of maximal contraction in that isometric position, regardless of what the exercise is here that we're talking about. So that's what I would say for your workout. 10 second maximal contraction, five second 
rest period in between each rep just to recover for a second, reset your form, and make sure everything's feeling the way that it should. This is one of the reasons I really like isometric exercises is because when we know what we should be feeling and we're not moving anywhere, it's a lot easier to really assess if I'm truly engaging the right things at the right time and in the right position. So, if you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and share it with a friend because you know we're all going on quarantine right now. Everybody's stuck at home and everybody has a bed sheet, so you can't go wrong. If you have any comments or questions about these exercises, please leave them down below in the comment section and I will be happy to answer any of those questions for you. And last but not least, if you guys have not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you do that. You don't want to miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, resolving aches and pains, preventing injury, and overall optimizing your performance. So click that button. I want to thank you guys for watching today. I'll see you next time.